better protection for those working on the front line. It comes as cases of the so-called Indian variant, now designated as the Delta uh, variant, continues to rise while they'll meet with officials from the Department of Health today. Kamini Gadok is CEO of the Royal College of Speech and Language Therapists and is going to be talking at uh, those discussions later today. Thank you for taking the time out to speak to us here, though, on BBC News. Um, so first off, what, what exactly are you calling for? Well, we are calling for a change to the guidance that really reflects the fact that we know that COVID-19 is airborne. So you can actually catch COVID-19 by the um, aerosols, the little particles that are around you in the atmosphere. I think you and the public will have seen the adverts that were um, put out on TV showing, I think it was a woman who was speaking in a, a closed environment with lots of uh, green um, smoke coming out of her mouth to really make the point about the impact of just speaking and talking. And obviously with patients who have got COVID-19 coughing maybe into your face. So if you can imagine if you're a healthcare worker and your role is not just undertaking medical procedures that might induce a cough, which speech language therapy might be involved in, but also caring for patients on a day-to-day -day level as a nurse, as a paramedic, as any other allied health professional or a doctor, but actually you are in regular and close contact for a significant amount of time in front of a patient, which puts you at high risk. Kamini, just um, I understand um, uh, uh, you've made the point about you know the, the logic of it, but let's just try and paint a picture for the public. When you say change the guidance, practically, what will that mean for you as a, a healthcare worker? What are we talking about here? Okay, so it's actually providing better masks, better PPEs and protection. So at the moment, the majority of NHS workers are given surgical masks, which we know do not actually protect you in, in, in this sort of situation and against an airborne uh, transmission and an airborne environment. So we want to have access to FFP3. At the moment, the guidance states that you can only have access to FFP3 if you're doing high risk procedures. And if you could just very quickly explain what FFP3 is. So it's a, it's a mask which ha ha is place of fitting and um, fil filters out these particles. Now, we know that there are UK manufacturers that are working at the moment to develop uh, reusable masks. So in terms of um, uh, creating something that's more sustainable for the future, they are ready to scale up the production of these so that they can be made available. How much hope do you hold out that you will be given these better masks? Well, I'm hoping that um, colleagues that we're going to meet with this afternoon will listen to the call for change, particularly because America have already changed their guidance for NHS staff and have said that actually surgical masks do not protect NHS workers and should not be used. So I'm hoping that uh, in line with other countries who are moving in this direction, that we will also see the change that we want to see. Okay, Kamini Gadok, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thanks very much.